Well, one of the uh, one of the great advantages of being in a in a creative industry is that you can and you normally do draw inspiration from a variety of different sources. But it's my contention that actually the creative process itself and the provenance of these great ideas is not really that well understood or researched. After all, the book really highlights the fact that most people, when they get their best ideas, are not even trying. They're not in the workplace, and they're quite often on, the, on their own. And that says something very clearly about the secondary nature of the creative process. And I believe that the more we understand that and the more we educate people about that, the more successful they can be. After all, if we can't use our own inner resources and our own potential, well, what hope have we got for the rest of the planet? Yeah, I think the early part of the 21st century was really characterized by an acceleration in the pace of information and technology to the point where it itself accelerated the behavior of people that used it. I think we have to accept that machine-based learning and artificial intelligence is going to accelerate way past the capacity of individuals, of human beings, to be able to keep up with it. So at some stage, we have got to accept that the technology and the information is going to move faster than we can. And so therefore, we either, we either triage the information, or alternatively, uh, we try to keep up and get burnt out in the process. Well, that's a great question because it really comes down to something which is really quite old-fashioned. It's not really about the technology itself, it's about trust. It's actually about, about trusting the fact that educated adults in the workplace will know where the off switch on their device is and they'll be allowed and mandated to use it whenever they see, see fit. The technology uh, has got to be a bit like fire. It can be a great servant, but it's an evil master. And we have to remember that the technology is there to serve us not the other way around. Uh, in the book, there's an interview with the Reverend Alistair Coles, who's one of the most interesting clergymen I've ever come across. I wanted him in, in the book because it, he talks about two fundamental states that exist in the human psychology. He talks about people who are transmitting and people who are receiving. And he says that we've become a world of transmitters rather than receivers. Now, this has quite important implications in the creative world because most of the creative provenance that we've seen in the book comes from people when they're not at work, when they're not trying, and when they're on their own, which means that it must be some form of igneous process that comes out from, from the individual, i.e. the information, the ideas have come into the individual, been stored, and then they've come out later on when they've been allowed to. Now that also has a real implication in terms of the people who are transmitting because we spend a lot of time in the creative world transmitting information and we should be spending a bit more time on the incubation and on the receiving of information to allow that creative process to work. Put simply, we can't expect something out unless we put something in.